Hey there folks, welcome back. And as F1 wound down from its summer break, the WRC came back from its summer break this past weekend with Rally Finland, the Rally of a Thousand Lakes, Rally of Vascular, the Gravel Grand Prix, whatever you want to call it. A legendary event that has only been missing from the calendar once. And this, <laughs> this weekend's one started off so spectacular. Um, in the end, it uh, brought us another Oitanak domination. <laughs> They did throw some surprises up, so over the course of this video I'm going to look at a couple of different talking points and expand on them a bit more. Now some of these are going to be spread over multiple videos, so for example driver selection will be spread over a couple of different videos, because for example Hyundai unveiled today their German lineup, which is not going to have Sebastian Loeb in it. Which Loeb said was never the plan anyway, he was never planning to do Germany, he's probably going to be planning to do Spain, but it was certainly interesting to see. So, I guess the first talking point is how did these one-off drivers do? Well, firstly, we never got to see how Aidan Padden would do, which is such a shame. Um, in the pre-event test, he ended up crashing, and because of the fact that he was so close to the event, he had to use the event car instead of the test car. Now, most of us have done this before. Um, Tebu Sidadon in 2017 had to use his event car for testing because Seb Ogier crashed the test car, but that's a different situation altogether. Uh, it's a shame that Padden wasn't able to do it. Hopefully, he'll be back later in the season. Hopefully, that M Sports deal will still come to fruition and hopefully it'll be before Australia. I, I really hope for that. Um, Hayden seems just like a phenomenal guy, really good talent, and somebody we're actually really missing from the sport. Um, elsewhere, we had Gus Greedsmith in another end sport forward, and for Gus, I do feel sorry for him. He's had two really tough rallies as his first two outings to the World Rally Car. Um, he did make it to the end of this one because of an off in, I believe, was it the third last stage of the event? It might have been a penultimate stage, I can't honestly remember off the top of my head, but he was a misheard pace note and he went off the road. Now, these kind of things happen all the time in Finland, so don't owe it down to just a rookie mistake. It happens to the best of them. We saw it happen to Chris Meek in Corsica last year. Though, it makes you think now because um, Emma Sport is saying that Alfred Evers might not be back for Germany. Who will they call up? Will it be Greensbiff or will it be someone like Eric Kameli who uh, delivered a, well, almost non contested second place at WRC2 Pro? But managed to bring the car home safely even though there was a couple of issues. And then, of course, we have Craig Breen. Now, Craig Green was fantastic, he loved the car, and he was giving us some amazing stage times as well. He was showing up Andreas Mikkelsen, he was even showing up Thierry Nerville, perhaps even more. But I'll talk more about the t by team analysis in a second. Um, it's phenomenal to see Craig Green back, and potentially with the way that it's looking in terms of the rally calendar, could see someone else step up into that car again. Because with, uh, for example, Spain coming up, where you might see Loeb and Sordo, like we did in Corsica, you never know what will happen. But yeah, let's go on to a team by team analysis. And for Ford, well, after not having Patton start and have agreed to a crash out on the last stage, it was really sudden and to carry it. Um, and you got to feel sorry for the guy. He lost confidence on Friday when his front splitter was gone and never really recovered from it. He ended up at the back of the WRC pack, um, apart from Greensmith when he was in the running, and finished eighth. Tamu is an amazing driver. He's got Yama Leighton in, in the co driver seat. The performance last time out in Sardinia, well, it speaks volumes about uh, how much potential he has. He can be a championship contender in the future, he can be a rally winner. He could be a rally winner this season. He just needs the confidence, he needs that perfect spot. But because of the high attrition rate, and because of people finishing all sorts of places in the order, Elford Evans, who missed the event, has not fallen down in the championship order. Of course, Andreas Mixon has closed up on him, but he's still a solid fourth place. And with that, let's go to Hyundai themselves. 
you know, they still haven't put a podium in Finland. And this year we thought maybe they'll be able to change their fortunes. They brought so many upgrades, uh, but then it turned out to be almost Toyota domination with the exception of EP. Uh, Craig Green, like I said, performed very well. Andreas Mikkelsen was doing quite well too. Um, Craig Green, you don't see it in the result because he took a 40 second penalty on the start of the final day to let Neuville through. But this is the second rally in a row now where Thierry Neuville has been the third Hyundai, essentially, on pace. He's been the slowest one, which is something that we haven't seen for ages in Neuville's career. I don't know if it's if you could say it's bad form. With Sardinia, it was just a lot of bad luck. With Finland, he's never really gone particularly strongly. So, I don't know what you can go it down to. But it certainly served Mickelson well. Uh, just performing so well on the stages and managing to bring home a solid, uh, what was it, fifth place finish? Fifth place finish, fifth place finish, sorry. Um, but let's go on to Citroen. Now, OJ managed to finish ahead of Neville on the road. Of course, Neville managed to pull the points back in terms of a deficit by going ahead and scoring a few more on the power stage and lucking out with the way that Andreas Mikkelsen slotted it. But OJ was still a solid performer. Even though he was ill on Saturday, he still managed to outdo Neville. He was still giving Craig Breen a solid fight. And EP. EP is back and it is amazing. I mean, we saw it on the podium, what Sweden, second place. When is he going to win in this car? He's proving again that the Citroen has pace. Which is interesting because we saw Chris Meek and Craig Breed say so many critical things about the Citroen this weekend. And not in a way of bad mouthing the team, the designer, and everything like that. They just said they never had a feel in that car. But in the cars that they were in now, they felt so much more comfortable. It felt like it was almost suited to the roads. Which is interesting given that Craig Breed talked about Hyundai and the other one is Chris Meek, who we'll go on to talk about in a second. And also interesting because Matt Osberg was competitive last season. So maybe it is just some people suit the car better. You also have to remember, to make this even better, Ogier had a more upgraded car than Lappi. Lappi didn't get the new front axle because apparently it was designed to suit Ogier's car better and suit his driving style better. So, props to him. I think he's my driver for rally. And then let's go on to Toyota. Chris Meek, um, I feel so sorry for the dude was so consistent at the start of the season, and then Portugal happened. And then he just had bad luck in Sardinia. And this time he got caught out of the same corner as Jerry Matty in the first round of Cacaristo. Then right near the end of the rally, another spin, and he was out. Toyota might have a difficult decision for what they do with their driver lineup next year. It depends on if Oitanek stays or goes but we're given to understand that Calabro and Pera has got a drive. Don't know if it's a full season drive, but it might put some of the drivers currently on the team under threat. And Yari Matti hit the same corner. Uh, Tommy McLaughlin was not happy with this. He really wasn't because he said, oh, it's just the red mist came down. We told them before, don't keep pushing each other. It was fantastic to see a Toyota watch for you though. I really thought it could happen. It said it was a first and third. Yari Matti managed to bring the car home. But I really want Yari Matti to win. He's won in every season since his first win in 2008. It's an amazing record. I want to see him keep it. But I did find it weird how Tommy was critical in that way. And despite the fact that Oitalic dominated, and it shows the team is built around it, the car's built around it. Mash to, even though he was road cleaning, stay what 2.6 seconds off the race off the rally lead by the end of the first leg um, <laughs> and then absolutely dominated legs two and three this is the kind of thing that Macklin had before this is the kind of thing he had when he was a driver but what's also interesting is Macklin and his driving style when he was a driver like remember the classic rivalries he had with Con McRae they would keep pushing each other until one of them crashed and it wasn't always Colin even though Colin McSlow just called him a crash sometimes, it was also Tommy that had these kinds of incidents. And he had some big ones as well. 
So I found it surprising that he was so critical of his drivers, or maybe that's just the way the press wanted to spin it. And well, that's my team by team analysis. Um, in terms of other talking points for the rally, um, I think Friday was definitely a personal highlight. When we had at one point the top four separated by 0.6 seconds. And even though it was three Toyotas up there, you had EP, and you were splitting them. Sadly, Saturday and Sunday couldn't uh, live up to this, but it was still a spectacular event. I'm really looking forward to Germany now, and not just because of what might happen in regards to lineup shakeups. Anyways, I hope you'll stick around. Um, I guess this is it for this video, but I will be talking about driver lineups, driver rumours, and so on and so forth over the next few days, over the next couple of weeks, building up to Germany. Until, well, we get finalised, confirmed lineups for all the teams. We know Katsuta is going to be starting in Germany, for example. But yeah, thank you so much for watching. If you want to stick around, you can always subscribe, hit the bell notification to find out when I'm going to be uploading. I do all these every day. And apart from that, hope to see you again soon. Goodbye for now.